We're also standing by, waiting for Minister Angie Mocheka with her briefing. As soon as she starts, we'll go live. Nikki Verd, as I said, international keynote speaker and author of best-selling book, Disrupt Yourself or Be Disrupted. So I spent a lot of time on LinkedIn, and I saw this one story that Nikki wrote about a country that I, I, I love, especially when it comes to the way they deal with, the, with technology. They're one of the first countries on this continent to have developed, I believe, a drone airport. When everybody was still talking about what a drone is, what must we do, they developed an airport. Um, and it's just so wonderful to see Rwanda, no matter what you might think of them and them disappearing people in hotels. But, um, you know, they are, I think, a beacon of hope on this particular continent. Nikki, great having you on the show. Thank you so much, Kino. So just, Nikki, just a little bit about some of the work that you've been doing, a little bit of an insight into yourself before we talk about uh, what President Kagame has been doing uh, and, and uh, the, the, I think the example we should all be following. But anyway, just a bit about yourself. Oh, wow. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. And as you have said, my name is Nikki Verde. I am the author of the book, Disrupt Yourself or Be Disrupted. The book actually came about because back in 2016, I was retrained and I didn't see it coming. So when it happened, uh, beneath the pain, I was asking myself, what is driving retrenchment at the rate in which it's driving? You know, uh, because back then, even now, retrenchment has been like a bloodbath, you know, for everyone. Yep. So I just throw myself on the Internet to find out what was happening. Remember, I don't have any prior background in IT or anything like that, but I wanted to know. So my research revealed that the uh, technology is driving, you know, these retrenchments and Mm. many workers can lose their jobs and the company continues to thrive because they are replaced by machines. And so it was quite an interesting thing for me. And so I decided to start writing about it. Initially, it wasn't like going to be a book. It just evolved into a book naturally (laughs) because I realized that a lot of people, including the specialists that are the IT guys in the department, do not even understand how much technology is changing the world. And so I just had to share my thoughts on what I was finding. And so, yeah, that is, I, that is a bit of a background about me and the book. I, 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 I never start with a, with a conclusion, but um, <laughs> in your case, I'll start with a conclusion, right? I, lo- I love what you wrote. Dear Africa, we have, we have a continent to build. Oh, yes. We are those heroes that we have been waiting for. Rwanda shows us what is possible when you stop being the victim. All I can say to you is amen for that, because (laughs) even if you look at COVID-19, people are crying in their porridge going, "Ah, what am I going to do? Um, Taxi taxi industry crying in their porridge because, oh, my word, someone came up with Uber and we've been (laughs) out-innovated. And you saying stop crying and start doing so. Yes. Yeah. You said that that is your key message, isn't it? Absolutely, because it's it's like actually what I have lived through it. You know, when I lose my job, I had I had that I could have also chosen just to cry and complain and do all of that. But I had to find out, okay, where to from here, what next? And I, I basically reinvented myself. And seeing the progress that I have made, I am not where I where I want to be, of course, but I am not where I used to be. You know, so if I could do this, my message to anyone is that you can do it. You know, mm. sitting and crying has never really solved any problems at all. It has exactly. never really solved any problem. And so when I look at what Rwanda is doing based on their own history of the genocide, yes. no one, I mean, if they had given up as a country, the world we understand, you know, mm. but they decided, no, we are not going to sit back and feel sorry for ourselves because this thing happened to us. They are actually, you know, being a leader in the space of technology and, and a whole lot of things. And when I look at a country like that, I apply their own principles to mm. my own life, you mm. know, and as an individual, they did not sit back to complain and exactly. blame, you know, the foreign. Well, exactly. Uh, I mean, the you rest can... of the world. Yeah. I I, I don't think we turn a blind eye to all that's happened, but you can't make that your narrative at the end of the day. Um, That narrative is not going to feed you. So let's talk a little bit about Silicon Valley. What are they doing? If you can give us a a, a brief insight into that. Yes, uh, maybe a bit of a disclaimer. I'm not a spokesperson for this. No, no, for sure, for sure. I just you just wrote a wonderful article. <laughs> yes, so I just researched and I, I wrote I wrote about it. And you know what they are actually doing is to create this. Uh, it's more an innovation hub on a massive scale, you know, to, mm. so that it can um, encourage new ideas for young people. You know, where they can 
bring their new ideas that can transform the continent and, you know, even have to export maybe some of our best innovations to the rest of the world. And so mm. they are creating this platform for new ideas to thrive and for young people to have hope in the future and for people to get comfortable creating their own you know, their own things, mm. their own innovations, their own uh, sort of Silicon Valley type of things that are happening in the West. You know, people should get comfortable. Africa should get comfortable doing that. And Rwanda is providing that platform for its citizens. And I think it's wonderful. And I think it is. Uh, a, a lesson that, that, that we can all... We, we have lovely politicians. I love our president, the current one, not, <laughs> no, not the previous one. The previous one, I believe, should go to jail. But the current one um, spends too much time with people in suits. He needs to be talking to other people who wear chinos and shirts yes. and who are entrepreneurs and who innovate, and I think that's important. But, Nikki, we have run out of time. I just want to oh. thank you for that piece. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put that link to your piece up online thank so you. people can go and read it. And thank you for, for, thank you for the attitude. Thank you for um, you know, just inspiring us the way that you have. Much appreciated. Thank you so much, Kino. Thank it's, you. It's a pleasure. Nikki Vert, the international keynote speaker and author of best-selling book, Disrupt Yourself or Be Disrupted. Paul Rulof.